summit and topping the agenda, the war in Ukraine. The summit comes just as Ukraine's counteroffensive enters its fourth month. CNN's Fareed Zakaria sat down exclusively with President Volodymyr Zelensky this week and asked him about concerns over the pace of Ukraine's operations. Everyone is wondering about the counteroffensive. Um, there was a, f a, a sense that it was slower than expected. Now there is some hope that it is speeding up. Uh, can you give us a sense from your perspective, what, how is it going? It depends on many directions, on many cases and issues, how to uh, speed up counteroffensive. But remember that we need the result. The result we, we need, we have to get our our land, we have to get to deoccupy the land, and it's all, all also not about the land, it's about the people, because the frozen war is not the peace. We are speaking about Putin, he wants to take all our country, to destroy all our families, houses, and etc. Because, because if he, he understands why he, why he destroyed, he understands that, that Ukraine will never go back, go away from our land. We'll never do it. That's why he has to kill us. Uh, he, he want to do it. Th that's why when we, when we speak about the counteroffensive, it depends on many cases. Of course, we gave a lot of time for Russians. We gave a lot of time to prepare, to mine. To, to put the mines in. To put the mines on the fields, on the on the, on, on the big territory. And so you, you see the three defending lines. And that's because you were waiting for Western For the weapons. weapons. That's why I said, yeah, yeah that's why that what I said. It depends on many issues. We, we, look, we waited too long. It's true. No, I'm thankful to partners, to United States, EU, other partners. I'm thankful very much, President Biden and said, but we, we have, and to Congress, but we, we have to understand. We, first, we waited too long, they put mines. Then when we been ready from the point of view of our partners, because the decision to give us, for example, Bradley or another kind of weapon, the decision, it doesn't mean the result. You don't get them immediately. Of course, the, of course you don't. Of course you don't. So you, something still on the way. Till now, when we are sitting and speaking about it, when counteroffensive, when a lot of different people say that it's too slow, but it's still on the way. And you can catch Fareed's whole interview tomorrow at 10 a.m. on GPS. For more on this, now let's bring in retired Air Force Colonel Cedric Layton. He's also a CNN military analyst. Colonel, great to see you. So you heard President Zelensky, you know, defending the counteroffensive there amid suggestions that it's, you know, going too slow. What is your reaction to his comments and and some of his expressed frustrations? Yeah, Fred, well, he's absolutely right. I mean, when you look at it from his point of view, he is in the middle of a war. He's fighting for the very existence of Ukraine, of his country, his culture, uh, his society. And uh, the lack of urgency, or at least to the perceived lack of urgency uh, in the West, has caused Ukraine a lot of grief. It has caused Ukraine to delay any counteroffensives. They were able to do magnificent things in terms of military speed last year uh, when they were able to recapture areas around Kharkiv and later in the south around Kherson and, and that particular part of, of Ukraine. Uh, but at that point in time, the Russians had no defensive positions uh, to speak of. They didn't have the tank traps. They didn't have the dragon's teeth. Uh, they didn't have the trenches. They didn't have the mines. And that's the kind of thing that they were allowed to build up during this period that Zelensky was waiting for weapons to arrive from the West. Uh, so this, in essence, a lack of urgency mm -hmm. uh, on the part of the, the suppliers of this, uh, that has created the slowness in, in this counteroffensive. Mm -hmm. And this interview taking place uh, before world leaders have been meeting now in India, you know, for the G20 summit and, um, you know, Ukraine uh, now, you know, blasting the group of 20 after they agreed, you know, on a joint statement uh, today that calls on states to refrain from the use of force to seize territory, but stop short of condemning Russia. So is this declaration strong enough? 
No, it's not when you really think about it. And uh, the Ukrainians have a point here as well, because, uh, you know, what we're looking at is a war of conquest, a war of, uh, you know, in essence, that uh, throws back uh, us back to the 1930s. And that's the kind of war that should be condemned by all of the powers in the G20. Uh, and the fact that uh, they went basically halfway, they took half steps to saying that a war of aggression is wrong, and that is correct. The problem that you have is that they didn't specifically condemn Russia. So Russia, China, uh, other countries that are aligned with them can say, well, look, you know, this hasn't really, uh, doesn't really apply to us because we're, uh, you know, taking care of our ethnic people or our populations that are in other countries. Uh, we're taking care of our own security, things like that. So they will find an excuse to justify their actions. And those excuses are, of course, going to uh, create problems for the world order. And in essence, they're not really, the G20 nations are not really defending the world order as they should be defending it. But of course, it's mm -hmm. not necessarily in their interest in some specific cases to do so. All right. We're also learning this week of some you know, rather stunning revelations in a new biography about Elon Musk, you know, detailing his impact on the war in Ukraine. The book, Elon Musk, uh, alleges the ex-owner disrupted a Ukrainian sneak attack against Russia, uh, its naval fleet in, in Crimea, by shutting off Kyiv's Internet access via his Starlink satellites. Uh, what do you make of those allegations? Well, they're quite serious, and it, it really shows that one individual, in this case Elon Musk, has a lot of power to influence war outcomes. And, you know, he, it was good that he allowed Starlink to be used by the Ukrainians. That, in essence, saved Ukraine because the communications that uh, are allowed through uh, Starlink, the connectivity that it enables, uh, that is analogous to the kind of connectivity that a great power would have in their communications uh, links. Uh, and the Ukrainians got that as a commercial off-the-shelf type capability. Uh, but when it was cut off, that enabled uh, the Russians to, in essence, protect their fleet uh, by uh, not being attacked by the Ukrainians. And so, uh, you know, he's kind of playing a dual role in this. He's worried about uh, the Russians responding with nuclear weapons to Ukrainian attacks. But on the other hand, he's not. But because he cut off communications at this particular juncture for that sneak attack, mm. uh, it uh, prolonged and, you know, has the possibility at least of prolonging the war at this point in time. All right, Colonel uh, Cedric Layton, we'll leave it there for now. Uh, thank you so much. You bet, Fred.